Hello, David here at merchantaccounts.ca. Today I'm talking to Josh Bartolomucci from Foxycart. We're gonna be talking about how modern e-commerce can be implemented by leveraging no-code solutions. Because building an e-com website can be totally overwhelming and it's one of those areas you can just spend loads of money. And I've noticed over the years, and I think this is a good thing, businesses are moving away from reinventing the wheel. I'm talking like the add to cart buttons. If there's, a, if there's like a zillion e-commerce websites out there, why would they all need to build everything from the ground up? And there's a lot of reasons on offsetting that though, why you want a custom or a somewhat customized e-commerce website, because it helps you accomplish your goals more effectively. So Josh is the, is the marketing manager over at Foxy, which is a very flexible shopping cart and it's built around the idea, at least I think it's built around the idea, of not trying to give you everything in the kitchen sink, but more about dropping their functionality into your website to make it easier to deploy more custom e-commerce websites. Josh has many years of expertise in web development and e-commerce. Josh, thanks for joining. I guess first question, did I manage to explain Foxy well? Because I get confused about it. It's a hard platform to summarize. Yeah, David, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I think you nailed it. You know, the idea is that Foxy was made to be a tool that you can drop into your existing tool set. So when you need e-commerce, but your existing tool set doesn't support that, or maybe there's some functionality that you're missing, Foxy's a great fit. That's, that's what I thought. And I used to be a web developer like 100 years ago. Uh, I know I don't look it, but <laughs> any, any commerce here is 100 years. And so I always lean towards doing everything custom, but, but, but really that's not really reasonable anymore. But I don't like the rails in front of me with many platforms, not to name any names. So I like the flexibility. And whenever I have people that come to me with like something complicated, something weird, Foxy is one of the one of the ones that pops into mind because it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's like it's like a, a weird solution problem solving platform. I don't know, maybe that's a good way to say it. Yeah, I know exactly. I mean, Foxy was made to be pliable to your needs and that's kind of, it's the opposite with other options, right? Sometimes you're, like you said, you're kind of stuck within the rules or rails of what they have set before you. And Foxy is made to be pliable. So we don't, so we, we don't have any really opinion of what tools you're using and even what you're trying to do. We just focus on the cart and checkout experience and then let you do the rest. That makes sense. So I'm just going to jump right into it. I said it the, in the intro there, it's really easy to spend a lot of money building an e-commerce website. Obviously, I think you're going to agree with that statement. Um, is, that, is that one of the benefits of Foxy for merchants that if you want to build something custom, but you don't want to reinvent the wheel? So it's like, because I think what we ultimately want to talk about today is how to deploy things effectively. And part of effectively means not spending a boatload of money unnecessarily on, on something. Yeah, exactly. So there are a lot of solutions out there that that range in price. And, you know, when you need something more custom or specific to your use case, Foxy is a great option for that. Um, you know, again, going back to being pliable to your needs and also not reinventing the wheel. We, we cover a lot. You know, we've been doing this for like 15 years. So there's a lot of functionality and experience packed into what Foxy provides. Um, and so and sometimes we've got people that need just a little bit of what we do. Sometimes we've got people that need a lot of what we do. And the great thing is you can enable and disable what functionality you need for your specific use case without breaking the bank, which is really important. And for more basic uh, users like me, I'd be in that category. If you, to, to take it out of such an abstract or maybe there's non-developers watching this, like, you know, the add to cart button, let's say you have a website and you're pretty happy with your website, you have a web host, you're pretty happy with your web host, but you want to add e-commerce functionality to your website at, at like a basic level. It's like you can drop Foxy into what you've got and it just turns almost like, I know Josh, I could do much more, but it can turn a static website into kind of like an e-commerce enabled website and, and without the merchant needing to worry about the security issues, you're not going to touch card data and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah, Foxy really works hard to carry the PSAC compliance and security burdens so you don't have to as the merchant. Um, and then, like you said, it's easy. You could just drop it into what you're already doing. Um, and, uh, you know, usually there's not there's not for most use cases, there's not a lot of code involved. So it's pretty, pretty easy to do. And we worked hard to really lean towards different platforms like Wix and Webflow and Squarespace and whatnot and to help those users with tutorials and walkthroughs on how to easily implement Foxy into those situations. 
So I know that you wrote a blog post about no code. You've spoken to me a little bit about no code. I actually don't understand what it is. Uh, no code sounds impossible. So uh, maybe you could describe what no code or low code is to me because I'm interested in learning more. Yeah, absolutely. So my, my take on no code or low code are, you know, being able to build a full system or platform or meet your needs without really having to do custom development or even hire a developer. And many times that consists of piecing different tools together that really handle the different functionalities needed for your use case. So obviously like Foxy for the e for e-commerce, maybe Airtable for data management, uh, and then maybe like Zapier or Integromat to tie those tools together to really talk to each other. And all the tools I just mentioned could easily be used without any coding experience to really pull off a lot of great use cases. Now, I, I see your, your developer knowledge is shining through because I've heard of Zapier and I might have heard some of those other names. Okay, so like something, maybe I'm just gonna throw a name at you. you can tell me if this would be included in like that pile. MailChimp, because you don't wanna build your own, I don't even know if people still use that, but if you don't wanna build your own list management software, People used to use MailChimp. Is that is that kind of what we're Abs talking about? Absolutely. And MailChimp's even, you know, they've really grown what they, you know, as far as their service offering and functionality. They've got, you know, built-in automations and things like that. So yeah, I would I would consider MailChimp part of that no code or low code stack. Okay, so so I'm understanding it. So it's so my premise of what I thought it was, I think, is is what it is. It's like basically, hey, here's some people that are really good at managing uh, email lists and they have a really nice, easy API. And I don't know, maybe there's one out there for, I'm sure you're gonna tell me there is, for like ship figuring out shipping or something sure. like that, or maybe that's more of a foxy job. I, I, I don't know, but yeah, uh, there's some let's tools. pick that one. I'm just gonna pick on it. Okay, well, well, tell me about that then. So let's say I'm coding a website and I, I you know, I, in fact, I'll tell you. So I just bought a, uh, a Lyft e-foil. Uh, it's an electric hydrofoil surfboard, which I love. It's like the most, I'm living from the future, literally. <laughs> but it, it's, it, it, it's, it's really cool, but the battery is like a hundred cell phone battery. The battery itself is about $4,000 US. Wow. It's big and juicy. You can't bring it on an airplane because you know, you ever seen like a cell phone battery catch on fire? If this thing catches on fire, yeah. the whole block is burning down. You know, maybe I'm exaggerating, <laughs> but. Point being, there's all kinds of like special shipping stuff. In fact, the battery ships from wherever in the States, the board ships from Puerto Rico. Um, I'm just making stuff up. I'm just gonna put you on the spot. So sure. if I was a developer and I'm trying to figure out how to do something like that, how could no code or low code come into solving that problem, if it even applies. I don't know. Well, you've touched on a very complex subject and that's shipping, right? So uh, I, I think there are tools to help. You know, you've got like ShipStation, you've got uh, Shippo, you've got a few others that really become like connection tools or connector tools that really let you send data, let's say the order and customer information, and then send that data to different carriers or fulfillments and whatnot. Um, so I there are some some options out there to help with that. Uh, it's a very complex subject, though, as far as shipping goes. Well, I yeah, and I came up with like the hardest thing I could possibly think. Of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going easy on you today. Just that's so you all know. right. That's uh, all right. There are tools okay. to help, I think. Okay. But as far as you know, that's the key thing. To, and this is a good point. The, the thing to think to consider with low, no code and low code, there's not always a solution for everything. You know, there are, there are many no no code or low code. Uh, you know, things I've put together that still required a little bit of maybe custom script or whatnot to, to fulfill the rest of that functionality. You know, so I don't think there's ever truly a, hey, there's no code involved. There are a few situations like that. But I think most people that have, have dabbled in it a little bit have, have come to realize very quickly, you may need a little bit of extra experience or knowledge to, to fulfill some of those pieces. Uh, while other things, it may be just a click of a button, but maybe not everything's like that though, or as easy as that. Well, I mean, like it doesn't even, to me, I can't fathom where you would ever not need to do anything because the whole idea is taking off the heavy lifting. Sure. Uh, y you know, it's like, uh, I want someone to, you know, do the farming and, and get the ingredients and bake the cake and I'm just going to show up and eat it. I, I, I want as much people to do as much of the hard work as I can so that there's as little for me to do and then just uh, reap the benefit. And you're paying for that, sir. I'm guessing you're paying for all those services, Zapier sure. and MailChimp. They've built these great APIs. Is that the right way to describe it? It's like an API or like a service and then... 
I think a lot of it deals with API connections, maybe web hooks and other technologies. But but yeah, I mean, the, the, at the end of the day, it's about working smarter, right? And sometimes there is a cost. So if I, I could go and I could build something custom out and hire a team or do it myself that does this thing that maybe Zapier does as far as, let's say, a connection between Foxy and Airtable. So an Airtable is kind of a, like, you know, Google Sheets on steroids. It's a visual database builder. And I want to send that data in there. Now, I could build a custom integration. It may take me, uh, you know, some money and time. Or I can just tap into Zapier and pay a monthly fee and it just works. And within, you know, five to 10 minutes, I can have that already sending the data over to Airtable. So you kind of balance out what's it worth to you. Um, and also what I love about no code and low code tools is that the companies that do whatever they do, Zapier, for example, you know, it just works. There's not a, you're not having to trial and error a lot of things. They've got companies that just, they're, excuse me, team members that just focus on that stuff. Uh, and so a lot of times, you know, you're, you're, you're taking on the burden of, does it work? Are there edge cases we haven't thought of? What if it breaks? Things like that compared to let's just pay the, the people that already do it really well and we'll pay a monthly fee and, and have it working. That makes, that makes sense. And it's stress tested by a bazillion people just by virtue of the fact that it's so popular. So, uh, okay, so I'm gonna throw another question at you then. So what's the trade off with no code? Because here, let me, I'm gonna qualify my own question. Anytime to me something's made easier, it means there's some sort of rail up that makes things easier. Does it constrain you? If you go to no code, does that, are, you, are you ever painting yourself into a corner or are they kind of designed, maybe they're designed from the perspective of, of it's just like you hook in and out? Um, I don't know, I'm curious to know about what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, it varies, right? I mean, there are some tools that are just really, really mature. And so they know what their customers need and want. And so there's a lot of flexibility there. So, hey, it's easy to pipe the data into this tool. And we've also made it easy to connect to other tools from this specific tool. Um, so it, it really varies depending on what you're using. I think the goal of any company that's helping with no code or low code is to be more flexible as time goes on. And, and the demands of the no code and low code movement are growing every day. And so people People want it to just be, listen, I want to do this thing. I don't want to have to code it. Help me figure that out. And I think I think software companies are listening to their customers and they're making it easier for those different you know, needs. You know, I kind of want to make a point to the viewers here because I've, I've experienced this myself. So I have a, a short term rental property, like a vacation property that rents for a week at a time or two weeks, whatever. And I remember back in the day, like, this is not that maybe this is four years ago. And I knew that I was going to build a very simple website that was going to keep track of the rentals. And I realized I needed to have a calendar functionality on the website. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to roll up these sleeves. Sure, I haven't coded in 20 years, but I can figure this out. And I just need to like, going to track this in the, in the, day, the date and this and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, because I'm always like assuming, oh, this is, a, this is a small job. This is no problem. As soon as I actually forced my brain to look at what I was going to do, I was like, good Lord, I, I don't. I can't fathom how much I don't want to do this. So then I went out and maybe this isn't exactly low code, but similar concept. There was a company called OwnerRes. And what OwnerRes specifically, it's like a platform for people that manage properties, like on Airbnb and VRBO. They hook in, they power the calendar, they, they keep track of the payments, the reminder emails to people, deposits, balances. And I had that thing working in like literally in one day. If I had to code that, well, I'd probably still be coding now. So uh, maybe that, that's kind of like a low code or a no code solution. But in that case, it was that that actually is kind of like Foxy, but just for uh, villa or, or rental properties. But I love the idea. The, the reason I'm going on with this rant here to the viewers is it's so much more cost effective in some cases to take all of the hours that have been invested into this platform and play a, pay a reasonable subscription fee, then build it yourself. And especially for young companies, uh, the use case that I'm thinking of in, in my mind, it's not a startup, it's an e-commerce company that has a, pro that has a website, that has problems. Not, not, I don't mean like uh, uh, to detract from my theoretical business. All I mean is they know how they could improve their business, they know what their limitations are, but they don't wanna just go in, in, in invest in building because you can solve a lot of these problems very quickly then by just leveraging these technologies. It makes it very cheap in some cases to solve otherwise hard to solve problems. Did I just summarize no code? Did I, I think I just did. I think I didn't think I made a good use case there, compelling argument. <laughs> 
No, I, I think you're, I think you're dead on. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, everybody wants to start selling quicker and no code and low code just helps you do that. And yeah, you could always hire somebody to build this out custom and maybe it, maybe there's a little bit more flexibility, but what's it going to cost to, to host and manage the technologies needed? What's it going to cost to, to, you know, to call that developer when something breaks, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of pros to no code and low code, I think more than there are cons. So I think it's definitely something to consider for any business that wants to start selling fast and and do it right the first time. That, so I'm gonna ask you a question. The, the first time that I kind of heard about this concept was, so, so to the viewers not watching, um, uh, Brett, uh, is uh, the, the founder of Foxycart. He, he works with Josh. I was talking to him, whatever, uh, like a, a, quite a while ago. We we're talking about databases. And he was telling me about databases that were hosted on the cloud. And in my mind, and, and like, but, but websites could pull data from them. And I was, my mind was blown because how can you have like database information shooting across the web and have it be secure? Is there, this is just more of a point of my own curiosity. Is there like a lower no code solution for database management that you're familiar with? I'm just curious. Uh, it depends on the use case. Uh, my experience has mainly been with tools like Airtable, which I would consider a database that, tool. That's the one. That's the one that Brett was talking about. Yeah. Yeah, and and Airtable's great. I mean, and, and the use cases are crazy. I mean, we, we had a we had a user who needed to actually the data need to be accessible from other parties in a third party company. So uh, with Airtable, we could easily say, okay, here's your main you know source of data. But we want to send some of data, some of the data, but not all of it. It's based on a specific condition to this other database automatically when it meets a certain criteria. And that way, only that team has access to that data that we tell them they can have access to. And in addition, we want them to be able to add to that data. So not only just view it, but then add to it for their own needs. And uh, and with Air, something like Airtable, that was a fully no code solution literally visually sync to this table or this this database give access to these people you're done and i mean you're talking about something that to mentally work through before no code or low code was really a thing uh that would have taken a lot of time and money this is interesting so i got it so my nerd credentials are pretty strong like just in life i'm <laughs> I, I, I am pretty nerdy in my family anything technological breaks or needs to be set up. I'm the go-to person. What's interesting talking to you about this stuff is when you're explaining this, it, it kind of makes sense to me, but if I'm not aware of this, then I have to assume the typical small and mid-sized business owner is almost certainly not. And it sounds like there's a lot of tools that people could be leveraging and they just don't know to. So they just you know, they stick my SQL on the server or whatever, and they do it the old fashioned way. And maybe it's a lot more work. So I'm gonna ask a question then. Like, what are some of the things that you can do today in e-commerce, not just with Foxy, you could, but that you couldn't do even a few years ago? Because this, this might sound like old hat to you, but this is like genuinely fascinating. And I'll bet you a lot of people aren't aware about this stuff. Yeah, I mean, the the thing with no code, it really helps you accomplish things like you're saying that, that maybe couldn't have been easily done. One thing that I've loved and appreciate is with no code tools, and I, I'm going to go back to Airtable just because it's probably one of my faves and you can just do so much with it. But is that something like Airtable or a similar tool is that you can take that and add functionality to the platforms you're already using. So let's say there's a feature that doesn't exist in your existing shopping cart. And let's say one of those features may be... Uh, uh, tracking uh, follow-up. Okay, the order has been, uh, you know, order has been placed and I want to send a tracking code, but only when certain criteria is met. You could easily do that with a tool like Airtable by syncing that data and then with different conditions, Airtable has built in automation. So we can say, if this crit criteria is met, I want you to connect to my Gmail account and I want you to send an email from my Gmail account with this information from the database for that specific customer. And all of it is literally no code. It's a visual builder. Um, another cool use case would be something like um, uh, that we've had come up a few times. You know, a lot of times when an order's out of stock, it just says out of stock. And you you potentially lost that customer. You lost that sale if there's no follow-up or call to action. But what if instead of showing out of stock, what if we showed a, a sign-up form where they put their name and their email address 
And then as soon as that item comes into stock, they're going to get notified with a link right to add that product to cart. And, and that all the variants already configured, the color, the size, everything they had that configured previously, oh. they're going to get notified that that's ready to go and click here to buy it now. So from, right from Outlook or Gmail, you click a link and you're, and you're back in the checkout funnel. Exactly. And you could do something. We've helped do that with, with some of our users where in Airtable, we're just a form submission gets sent. It passes in the product name, the SKU, the variants that were chosen, the URL of the product page. And then it adds that to a table in Airtable. And as soon and that's connected to uh, a product or inventory table. And it just checks and it says as soon as that SKU inventory goes anything above zero or whatever threshold you you set, let's fire off an email. And again, we have access to all that data that is passed in there now, product and customer data. And uh, something like Airtable allows us to just build that automation, no code, which wow. is pretty amazing. I mean, it is. It's so it's so maybe it's just the way that I learn as well. It's almost like I need to see it in front of me to understand it. Other than the fact that I know that it's possible and I'm understanding the concept. Sure. There are worlds of options available that probably a lot of people aren't aware of. Uh, and I think maybe as you know, e-commerce and, and, and even the web continues to mature, people will continue. Hey, and honestly, maybe I'm standing here. Oh, nobody knows. Maybe everybody knows but me, but I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I think there's a lot of people that still don't know. But I think the, the good news is, is that I think no code tools are becoming household names. Zapier has been around right. a long time. And I'm, I don't know if they were specifically the first one to do what they're doing as far as data connection. Is, is Zapier the one that allows anything to connect to anything? Because when I saw it, I remember thinking it's like Zapier gets you from here to there or so, something like that. Exactly. It's kind of the middleman. So you have a trigger and you have an action. And, you know, they've got 3000 plus apps that you can connect to it, um, as well as native functions and uh, connecting to your own uh, custom web hooks and things like that. And then there's tools that have come along and said, hey, we love what Zapier is doing. We're going to do it better. And you've got Integra, Matt, and you've got some others, you know, that, that, that do similar things. So I think it's becoming more normal. And I, the thing I love about competition is that people get better options, right? The tools get better. The teams are pressured to do better, build the functionality that their competitor has. Um, and then it, no code becomes more of a household term uh, for, for businesses. And so I, I think it's an exciting time for sure. I keep track of a lot of what's coming up as far as no code and low code tools. And there's a lot. And, and it's, you know, some of them are just kind of trying to get rich overnight. Other ones really have a good a good motive and have a good long term plan. Uh, but I think it's going to become more affordable and easier for for businesses to use no code tools. So, you know, as I'm listening to you, I'm starting to wonder then, is Foxy in a way a no code solution for e-commerce? Because in a sense, you're maybe kind of like the library people hook into for all the e-commerce stuff. And in a sense, is that right or is that wrong? I think in many cases, we, we can be that no code or low code tool. Uh, you know, there are some tools that just require it's fully visual, right? It's 100 percent visual. There's you there's no or hardly any copying and pasting, right? Or having to type anything out manual. And I think I think that sometimes in the no code movement, there is an expectation for that, right? Like, well, don't make me think, don't make me do anything. I just want it to click and have, you know, an Amazon marketplace working. <laughs> you for promised like, well, no you code. Know, I want no code, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I think but I think people realize, wait, OK, I have to do a little work here. So we've worked really hard in especially with with platforms like Webflow and Squarespace. A lot of these DIY website builders, we've worked hard to tap into their native functionality and build out tutorials and walkthroughs that require no code or very low code. And by low code, it may be as simple as copy and paste this and change that one parameter, right? Like maybe like your store name or something. Uh, so I, I, I think, yes, we could be considered a no code or low code tool. Also, in, in relation to that, we've got some new drop in um, what we call elements that we've been working on, uh, like a donation element. Literally, it's a snippet of code. You can modify the settings in there. What are my donation options? What are the designation options? Do I want to offer recurring and one time? And literally, it's just a small snippet. And you can plug that into any website and you instantly have a donation form on your website, already styled, mobile friendly, ready to go. I would consider that a no code or low code solution. That's interesting. That's really interesting. And at the same time, going back a few years, I first learned about Foxy many years ago. At the time, Foxy was really uh, direct, like this isn't for everyone. 
we want the people that work yeah. with us to have some level of, of technical expertise just because, I think because you're taking our code, you're dropping it into something, you need to be able to do that or we're not really a good solution. Is, is that still true today? You still are, are kind of targeting that type of, uh, that type of demographic? That's a great question. So I think, you know, used to we were really focused on developers, right? Um, the key thing to keep in mind with Fox is we don't actually manage the products for you. So we're leaning on you to manage the product data wherever you want. So whether that's a content management system, or maybe you don't even need that. Maybe you just have a, a landing page where you're taking pre-orders for a product and you've got that one SKU. Uh, you know, so I think, I think, we still, you know, obviously lean towards developers, but but the landscape has changed. The website builders, the platforms, the tools, over the last few years, they've changed drastically. So you've got a lot of people without really any coding experience that are building pretty complex sites and have complex needs, maybe for themselves or for their clients. And so again, as I mentioned earlier, we're really trying to, to lean towards that more in providing resources that make maybe Maybe used to we didn't have a tutorial on how to do this exact thing. Now we do because maybe our, our you know our user base back then really they understood that that was basic stuff because most of them are developers. Mm -hmm. But now we're really trying to create our resources in a way that not just a developer but anybody this can be a quick and easy setup. Again, not every case, but we're trying to make that that easier and quicker for most use cases. That, that makes that, that that makes sense. You know, it's funny as you were saying, people are not developers, and and maybe you assume. I remember in Unix, I'm just off on a tangent now, but every time I would read like a <laughs> Unix or a Linux or, or, or any sort of, they would use a term, it was like a VU or new, it was some technical term. Do you know what I'm talking about? It was a ter term for like a variable in Linux that they would use every time that you were trying to, oh my gosh, well, see now, because I'm not a... <laughs> <laughs> you might have lost me, but uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, it, that's okay. Basically, my point of my story is the manuals are so technical, I couldn't, I couldn't make heads or tails of it. But uh, so it's good yeah. to know that you're reaching out also to less, you know, technically advanced users. So that's good to know. So I'm gonna, and, and I want to clarify too. You know, even even though we we're we're trying to simplify things, that's the beauty of Foxy. Though it can be as complex or as pliable as you need it to be. So we've got some crazy use cases too. So we, we, we don't claim to be a perfect fit for all, but when we're a good fit, we're a really good fit. And so we're, we'll be the first to tell somebody, hey, we just don't think this is gonna be a good fit because we want you to have the right tools quickly. Right. Don't waste your time. We don't wanna waste your time with this. So, um, but I think we're getting better at, at helping with the no code and low code uh, you know, users that are looking for something a bit more out of the box which we're not always going to be like something like Shopify or competing product. Right. But then again, we're very pliable and we can handle those use cases that those other solutions can't. Interesting. So I'm going to change the direction of the conversation for a second here, because you've been in e-commerce for quite a long time. I'm curious if you see any trends or the industry moving in a particular direction. And I'm not framing that up. I'm just kind of asking, hey, Josh, what do you, what do you see changing or interesting in e-commerce right now? Uh, it's, that's a great question. I mean, I, I don't know. That could go a, a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as, uh, you know, products and, and, and the type of businesses, uh, you know, if you're looking at I mean, a lot of CBD, a lot of those, you know, more high risk type industries, we see a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing would be subscription services, you know, box, you know, box subscriptions. We see a lot of that come through. And that's obviously... Uh, a pretty uh, trending thing. I think it has been for a while, and that's something Foxy can help with as far as like recurring payments or you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, auto ship or auto pay and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, those are two things we see a lot of. I I hope that <laughs> kind of answers your question. No, but. it was a super uh, broad question <laughs> because I wanted you to be able to go in any direction. I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with like an example of kind of a thesis that I have. I totally don't okay. know this, okay? But I'm wondering like, and you would know this better than me because Shopee ha, Shop, sorry, Foxy has so many shopping cart clients or people using it to power their e-commerce. Uh, do you see a lot of generic retail websites that uh, Amazon has impacted? And and what I mean by that, it's more like a, a thing that I wonder. Like if I need a hockey stick. Is it hard to compete against Amazon on price and distribution? So I w I'm wondering if e-commerce websites today are moving away from traditional, simple retail catalog, and it's more about solving a problem or giving you something maybe Amazon or the or, or Walmart can't. I'm just curious to know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, 
No, that's a great question. I, I think what I see more are niche products, right? The products that, you know, just can't be mass produced. Mm -hmm. And that could be a number of things, right? Unique watches or clothing and things like that. Um, you know, I think people are tending to, to care more about the small business now. Mm -hmm. I think t people are caring more about the quality of the product they buy. Now, there are obviously some things I'm not going to go buy handmade toilet paper <laughs> from some merchant, you know, like, Shoot, I didn't I'm just going to go my get new that, website. right? And, oh my gosh, you just shot right. down my idea. <laughs> 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 like you know there's just some things it's like listen i don't care who's making this i just know i need a bunch of it at an affordable price right but there are other things where it's just like you know even you know for somewhat related you know at, at christmas time we like to sometimes get gifts for the team members and we like to look sometimes at our merchants or other small businesses they don't necessarily have to use foxy and so we're looking for those gifts you know and there's there's different things like we've got you know we've got a um a, a honey producer that's a user of ours and you know they have some amazing different honeys and butters and different things you know and those are things you can't just you know go get anywhere but it feels even better when you know you're supporting you know, a local a bee guy, you know, who's, who's doing this, who's got a family compared to maybe some mass mass produced honey. So um, I think people care about that. And I think I think people are giving people businesses are giving people better experiences now, too. And with the no code tools and the low code tools and the website builders and everything that is accessible to pretty much anybody now, if I have an idea, I can actually run with it without really any overhead. And I can say, listen, is anybody interested? I don't I don't even have to necessarily go to Kickstarter or any of those you know, platforms. I can just I can start selling online and see if there's interest and I can create a business very affordably, which is really exciting to me. And again, a quality product that, you know, supports a small business. Uh, I think it's amazing. That, that's interesting. I wonder if e-commerce has gotten more personal. In the sense that you know you're, you're talking about people thinking more about small businesses, and and I think I think we have for lots of reasons. One of them maybe being being COVID, and small businesses were obviously more impacted by Amazon, uh, or, or sure. sorry, more impacted than Amazon. Uh, I, th that's that's interesting to me. I I bet you that web copy itself, and the way that it's written, has become more personal. In other words, I find that websites talk. Do, do, have you noticed that because of social media and, I don't know, Instagram and different things, people have more of a, they bring their personality and their presence into it as opposed to, we are the greatest provider and we do this and less, less anonymity and more about who they are as humans. Like, hey, this is what we do. This is our team. This is how we, we can help you. Absolutely. I think every true company has a story. I think every good product has a story. And I think people are tapping into that more now, right? It's like, it's about telling the story. And sometimes that connects with people more than just it meets a need. Wow, there's, okay, I can relate to that, whatever that is, right? So yeah, absolutely. I think I think things are more personal as far as, uh, you know, even Webflow is an interesting platform. It's a, it's a DIY visual website builder. Anybody can go in and even create animations and all sorts of stuff. And one thing we've seen with the Webflow community specifically is there's a lot of stories being told, especially with e-commerce. And so you, it, it's not just I go to the site and there's an add to cart button. It's actually let me show you the journey of this product, this unique, you know, sweater or whatever it is, or these you know homemade candles that we're selling. And there's it, it's more it's it's a it's a visual uh, experience. And also a journey of the, the story behind that product, behind the company. And then the end result is buy this product now, um, which compared to your typical Amazon setup is who cares about the story when you're on Amazon, right? It's like, I want to, yeah. you know, is it, is it coming tomorrow? Yeah, exactly. And is it on sale? Who's the so, cheapest seller? How can I get it fast? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> a few minutes ago, I asked you like a really open-ended question uh, that you... I'm going to ask you an even more open-ended question. I, I'm totally putting you on the spot. You can go anywhere you want. You can check out of it as well. But I always ask people this because you never know when you get these great little tidbits. I'm wondering if you have any secret advice or just a great tip for e-commerce merchants. In fact, I'm going to tell you, you already gave one today. You gave one when you talked about if people abandon their checkout, then you can use an Airtable to somehow, you know, when it comes back in stock, shoot an email to them. You already gave like a super great one, but I'm now I'm making you come up with two. So uh, can you come up with another great, great tip for our viewers? Yeah, I think the, the, the thing I've learned over the years is 
and you and I were talking about this earlier, don't wait till everything's perfect. And, you know, a lot of times we've worked with users and stores and we've literally had stores sign up and they don't launch for a year later. Now, there may be a lot of you know, reasons for that. But what we find sometimes is people try to get it perfect. And what you, they'll find is, is even when you launch, it's still not perfect. So I would recommend, you know, get out to the market as quick as possible. Don't perfect it. Don't wait till it's per perfect to get out. Right. You know, there's there's you you can learn a lot now. You know, a lot of people spend a lot of time and money tweaking little things here and there on their checkout or on their website that their customers. Actually, if you ask them and did a survey or a sounding board, they wouldn't even care. They cared about these other things that you completely miss. So, um, you know, I have a I have a bad habit of trying to make things perfect before I, I, I finish it or submit it to the team or whatever. And I'm working on not doing that. And I think the same for businesses, too. That's really interesting. And that's actually, in fairness, not even just an e-commerce tip, because you can be in the planning stage for the next 20 years or you can just launch. And listen, sometimes you don't want to learn as you go. If I ever am having a surgery, I'd like the surgeon to be uh, kind of knowing Absolutely. what he's doing. But in the world of like sales and, and, and online commerce, like you'll learn more by doing than you will by theorizing i think that i think that's a fair statement i mean i believe so. i think so too yeah exactly i think so too i think a lot of people spend a lot of time and money on things that really they don't they think it's an issue or they think it's going to be a problem but come to find out it was this other thing that they fully missed and we see that a lot in in support right we'll have people you know merchants maybe email and say hey you know i want to i want to move this little thing here on the checkout page or whatever mm -hmm. and then sometimes a month later they'll be like hey we want to move that back our customers didn't like it you know it's you know and that's that's time wasted for them so uh, don't wait till it's perfect, get feedback and start selling sooner than later. You know, it's so funny. I'm glad that I don't know. If somebody had like an Excel sheet or like a little pie graph of the amount of hours I wasted choosing between 17 point or 18 point font, that'd be, that would be horrible right. because I know that that is going to yeah. be way too big for me. So I'm going to keep this in mind in my, in my own life when uh, going sure. forward. So. You know, I really have found this so interesting. And I really think that Foxy, for anybody that's looking at something custom, is a really good choice. I don't think there are a lot of platforms like Foxy. Uh, and, uh, you know, Josh, maybe I would let you, before, uh, before we sign out here, if there's anything you want people to know about Foxy or, or anything, I'd give you the opportunity to, uh, to tell our viewers. Yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, really, if... If you have e-commerce needs that either A, just don't exist in your existing platform, maybe you're using a website builder, uh, maybe they don't support e-commerce at all, or maybe they support e-commerce, but they don't integrate with the gateway that you need or support that one feature, that's where Foxy comes into play. Um, and you can drop us into what you're already doing. Another use case is just when you need something that you've outgrown your existing platform or e-commerce platform, and you need something with more flexibility, more customization, maybe more power, more features. You know, we've been doing this for a long time. I think we're going on 15 years. Um, e-commerce is not an afterthought for us. A lot of systems out there, they drop in e-commerce functionality with some limited features. Mm. Um, if you're serious about selling online, you want to be serious about the platform you go with because you don't want to find out in the middle of the game that something doesn't exist or something doesn't work. And, you know, we worked hard to make sure that our our merchants and our users, uh, you know, just have the best shopping experience for their customers. That, that's really great, Josh. And I, I found this to be a really interesting discussion. You really and truly did educate me on what no code means and really made me realize that you can do very custom things on, I'm not going to say a shoestring budget, but really a very tight budget, mostly on it with a series of subscription fees, uh, yep. one of which may be Foxy. So I absolutely, absolutely. That's great. Thanks so much for joining Josh and uh, you have a great day there. You too. Thanks so much.